As a leader, we need to remember that the tongue is the rudder of the ship. The great story Roman war hero Coriolanus fought 17 years of hard battle in the 5th century before Christ. And after 17 years of hard fighting, his name was Epic. The name Coriolanus inspired awe and majesty. And very few Romans had ever met him, let alone heard him speak, because he had spent all this time out on the battlefield. One day, Coriolanus decides that he's going to enter politics, that he will enter politics to be able to captivate the crowds and to accrue more power to himself. And so in 454, Coriolanus enters Rome to begin his political career, and he runs for a mid-level role. In his introductory speech to the people, he says very, very little. But he shows his dozens of scars during this speech to prove his loyalty, his fidelity, his commitment to Rome, his love for the Roman people. And the people remember this. They come to his support and they decide that they are going to support him. So Coriolanus has the election in the bag. As polling day arrives, he enters Rome in a procession with the Senate at one side and the tribunes at the other side. And he enters with the nobles, with Coriolanus at the center. The entirety of the Roman hierarchy showing their support for Coriolanus. But he makes one fatal mistake. He decides to give another speech. Another speech where he tells people that he is going to win, that the election is in the bag, and that he is the rightful recipient of this honor. He comes across as smug, as arrogant, and the people that day gain disdain for him. Again, it's polling day, and the word spreads. The word spreads throughout Rome. And the people show up in mass, not to vote for Coriolanus as they had planned, but to vote against Coriolanus. And as they vote against Coriolanus in numbers, Coriolanus just suffers defeat that day. And he is banished back to the battlefield because he has no place in Rome. The people do not want him. Now, the ability for the people to be able to get on with their lives, they thought was at hand. That Coriolanus had been banished, he had been voted away, he had gone back out to the battlefield to be a hero. A few weeks later, a shipment of grain arrives in Rome. And the Roman Senate is trying to figure out how they want to handle this. And they decide that they're going to give away the grain to the people for free, just to give it out. Then suddenly an announcement comes in, Coriolanus is here. And Coriolanus enters the Senate and he asks for the floor. They give him the floor out of respect for his heroicism for the Roman people. And Coriolanus speaks a third time. He convinces the Senate not to give away the grain for free to the people, but to keep it. Because by keeping it and saving it and maybe giving away a little bit, to be able to sell, not to give it away for free. That is how it helped Rome as a whole. And he convinces the Senate of this. He convinces many members of the Senate of this. But then he keeps talking. He keeps talking and says that the democracy, the Republic, is the wrong form of government for the people. That people do not know what they need. And so he attacks the tribunes, who are the representatives of the people. And says that the tribunes should be cast aside. The people don't know what they need. He speaks infidelity towards his own government towards his own people. And word spreads about this among the people. Word travels fast in 454 BC. And the people hear about this and they are in an uproar. They write in the streets demanding a public apology from Coriolanus. And finally, the people in power, the Senate, the tribunes are upset with them, the magistrates, the nobility, convince Coriolanus to come up and give a speech and give an apology. And as Coriolanus speaks for the fourth time and the final time, he speaks off very softly explaining his position and his love for Rome and his heroicism. But then he speaks too much yet again. Remember, the tongue is the rudder of the ship that steers the entire life. Coriolanus shows his hatred for the people and his hatred for the tribune. And that the people are inferior to him is what he says. He treats them with disdain. And the people will not have it. The people will not have it. They convince the Senate that he needs to be punished. They convince the tribune. And the tribunes didn't need very much convincing at all. They convinced the tribunes that they need to sentence him to death. And so the tribunes do that right on the spot. They order for Coriolanus's immediate death. And so as a procession of the magistrates who call out to execute Coriolanus, they lead him up to one of the highest rocks in Rome to cast him headlong as his penalty. The Senate steps in and decides, no, this is not appropriate, and banishes from the city of Rome forever. He is banished because of words, not because of action, but because of words. As leaders, our words mean something. As artists, our words mean something. As people who want to have influence and give credence to the values of others and to be able to build leaders and build organizations and be able to love people and inspire leadership, we need to look on our words 
as being responsible for the direction of our entire lives. Hey guys, I really hope you're enjoying the topic so far today. If there's anything that you would like for me to talk about next, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Love to hear great ideas about videos, stories, historical encounters, philosophies, world religions that you'd like to hear about. Comment below. Let's get back to today's topic. The great statesman, Henry Kissinger, and Robert Greene speaks about this in his great book, 48 Laws of Power. Kissinger assigns a research topic to Winston Lord, probably a research topic that in the end changes the landscape of the entirety of statecraft of the world. And as Winston Lord turns the report back in, he receives it back from Kissinger with just a few words on it that says, is this the best you could really do? Question mark. Winston Lord, concerned that he thought he'd done a good job, takes the paper back and considers Kissinger's remarks. Knowing Kissinger to be a wise man, and he feels like he's, he's let him down. So Winston Moore doubles down and creates a cleaner, more thorough report for his boss and turns the report back into Kissinger. The same thing happens. He gets the paper back. Is this really the best you can do? Question mark in red ink. Flustered, Winston Moore takes the paper back and rewrites the entire paper. Does the research again, double checks the sources, cleans up the grammar one more time and turns it back into his boss, Kissinger. And Kissinger's epic remark is, is this really the best you can do? And Winston Lord says, yes, it's the very best I can do. And Kissinger quips, okay, I guess I can go ahead and read it now. Kissinger's few words had maximal impact. You see this in the life of Louis XIV, when different parties would come to him and present a, their various versions of the solution, he would not have dialogue with him. He would let each party present, and he would remark, I will see to it. He never had dialogue. And this mysterious nature of Louis XIV, this all is something that helped him remain in power and struck fear into his people and fear into his advisors. They never knew what he was going to think. You see, because silence is power. Silence gives all an authority. Your absence is something that gives intrigue. And so when you are present, you have more efficacy. It was the great Abraham Lincoln who once remarked, better remain silent and be thought a fool than open your mouth and be proved one. This hilarious comment is something that is true of all of us. And that the fewer words that we say, the less likely we are to say something that is foolish or worse yet dangerous. Our words have implications. Words have meaning. They are the rudders of our leadership and the rudders of our very life. The rudders, the very smallest part of a ship, steers the entire ship. And you remember what we talked about, and we'll put a link up to the video here, the ideas of ships and how it relates to our lives and our community and ethics. We must manage our rudders, our tongues, because our tongues have the ability to be able to condemn us to hell or help us ascend up into heaven. Our tongues have the ability to be able to encourage or to mean. Our tongues have the ability to be able to inspire boldness and creativity and leadership and heroism, but it also has the ability to be able to curse. What will you do with your tongue? The safe thing, the wise thing, the thing that gives value can be thought of in terms of how Andy Warhol, the great painter, put it. He said that as I remain silent, as I remain mysterious, the value of my paintings increase exponentially because people love mystery, they love awe, they love reverence. And as long as you do not disclose the entirety of your thoughts, the people, your team, your organization, your customers, your partners can think of you the most positive of lights. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the topic so far today. If you're on Twitter, I'd love to hear from you. Follow me, Rick Walker Tex. Again, it's Rick Walker TX at Twitter. Love to hear from you over there.